Recently, a Portuguese man took a stand against Apple and subsequently invited an Everton fan to a Man U game. So, I'm joined by Christoph, and yeah, we're going to be rating some of footballers' best apologies, or at least attempts at apologies. So, I personally think we should start with the inspiration for this video, really. <laughs> oh, of course. Yeah. What a boy. Literally inspired this video. The kid was shouting abuse at him, right? I'm pretty sure the kid was shouting your sh your sh In fairness, it does sound like he deserved it. But you just can't do that, can you? So this was his apology. I think it's pretty weak, as apologies go. Yeah, he's invited an Everton fan to go and watch a Man U game. Like, has he not suffered enough already? We could maybe go gentle chuckle just for the spectacle of how it happened. I think probably gentle chuckle's fair. You know what, sticking with the Man U theme, the Bruno penalty miss. Look at this absolute essay. Gary Neville just went in on it. Like, he, he was not pleased about this. When Aguero penenkered and missed his penalty and then did his apology, that was like a little bit understandable because he penenkered. Bruno's literally just taken a normal penalty. Like, he's not even done his hop. What's he apologizing for? Missing. I think maybe solid effort. It's just the idea that he's missed the penalty. He's put it over the bar and then like gone home and gone. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I should not have done that. No, I should not have done that. <laughs> On the topic of penalty miss apologies, Sergio Aguero from, from a couple years ago. This one's funny because how it's worded, it's so like heartfelt. I do feel like this is a, quite a strong one. Fundamentally, he's still not penenkering for his ego. He's penenkering to try and score. So he's trying to think, what's the best way I can score here? And he's thinking a penenka, the keeper won't expect it. The keepers always dive to the left and right in pressure situations. It doesn't make sense. Why are you apologizing? Didn't Sissy go on to lose? lose 2-1 and that's why it also like because uh, this would have made it 2-0 and um, then obviously they went on to lose so this is a lot more justified than you know missing out on one point against Aston Villa. I'd say too genuine or gentle chuckle for this one. I think too genuine. Actually can we can we revise the Bruno one like I think that should be in too genuine as well. I can get behind that. It was really funny but I don't feel like as apologies go it was a good one. The Lukaku interview. So this is what he said about uh, about his interview in which a couple of weeks after joining Chelsea he said how he'd love to return to Inter Milan. <laughs> No, this hasn't aged well. Obviously, it's up to me now to restore your trust and I'll do my best to show commitment every day on the training ground. Didn't he get like six touches against Crystal Palace about a month ago? So this was when he was in Italy for something. Like, I think it was international duty or something. He just did this interview out of nowhere. Yeah, you can just tell he's, he's completely fishing for a move home already. So this one's a bit different to the other ones we've seen so far because this is stuff that he said in an apology interview. <laughs> so he did an apology oh. interview to apologize for the interview. Oh, I think he gets points for that. Yeah, this has actually come from his own mouth, hasn't it? I think maybe solid effort for this one. I do feel like he, he was actually sorry and it was just dumb. I think we should go for a nice uh, juicy one next. Wayne Hennessy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's even better? Why do his eyes look like Nazi zombie eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Feels like it should be accompanied with a yeah. There's a lot to dissect here. Hennessy <laughs> did not know what Nazi salute was. How is that the excuse that they've gone with? <laughs> they just said that Hennessy showed a lamentable degree of ignorance about Hitler, fascism and the Nazi regime. Wow! <laughs> His argument is basically, I wasn't aware that World War II happened. So Hennessy said he waved and shouted at the person taking the picture to get on with it and put my hand over the mouth to make the sound carry. <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> no There's way. absolutely no way. If it's just the arm. That could be interpreted in other ways, but it's the moustache as well. All we would say at the risk of sounding patronising is that Mr. Hennessy would be well advised to familiarise himself with events which continue to have great significance. You know how most clubs, like when they bring in like a foreign player with no knowledge of the language, they'll hire them like a language coach. Like I just love the idea that Crystal Palace had to hire like a historian a history, just, to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just to teach teacher. Wayne Hennessy about World War II. Our first absolutely glorious? I think so. This one is uh, one that we've covered in at least one other video, but it just had to be included once again. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gotta be. Yeah, that has to be up there. So the first part of the apology, the first paragraph, that seems genuine enough. You know, he's apologised for, for the performance. It's the bit at the end that really just screws it for him. Yeah, you had us in the first half. Don't say it got tweeted from your pocket while you were driving. Sometimes feels like at PR agencies, they like spin a wheel of excuses and just pick out whichever one hasn't been used yet. I think this one surely has to go in the top as well. Yeah. I think so. I didn't even know about this until I was doing a bit of research. Christian Benteke, uh, when he was leaving Liverpool, he accidentally announced that he'd signed for Burnley instead of Crystal Palace. <laughs> I did not hear about this. No, no, sorry, he, he signed for Burnley FC. <laughs> He's literally wearing like Crystal Palace colours and everything. This is his apology. Again, okay, this is amazing. <laughs> Oops, my bad, lol. <laughs> <laughs> 
the person that manages my Twitter got a little confused. You can tell he's definitely written this one. I don't think any social media manager would have put Burn Leal at, at the very least. <laughs> Not just got the team wrong, but also spelt it wrong. <laughs> yeah, and, and also changed his location to Burnley, England. I think that's solid effort for me. I think we already know where we're gonna put the apology for this before it's even gone in. Kurt Zuma and the cat incident. <laughs> I'd like to assure everyone that our two cats are perfectly fine and healthy. Well, the RSPCA did not believe that. Nah, no, that's a terrible apology. I don't buy that yeah. at all. Again, there's nothing you can do to interpret that any other way. It is just, it's animal abuse and yeah. they're laughing about it. Personally, I was in the camp of your Premier League footballer who people look up to. I don't think West Ham should continue playing him, but they did. Like, footballers have done worse and continued with their careers, haven't they? I think we can just say this one's going in Solar's PR, isn't it? Yeah, you just gotta hope that that cat didn't get the zoomies very often. <laughs> Another incident that I'd forgotten about until I think um, someone actually suggested this. Jamie Carragher and spitting on that uh, guy and his daughter. Jamie Carragher there, look. 2-1, mate. A lucky Jamie, look. 2-1, lad. <laughs> it's the way the 14 year old girl goes stop it. at the start, like really trying to stop him going up and berating Jamie Carrigan, and then she's the one that gets his bodily fluids all over her. It comes out of nowhere as well, like it kind of looks like he's just laughing and then BAM! Hits him with a spit. I remember him apologising quite well about this, like he apologised quite profusely. He actually did apologise to them in person in private as well by the sounds of things, which I think there's points for that. I feel like he apologised quite well, so maybe gentle chuckle. I reckon we throw this little incident in. He's oh just God. one player of the month. I think it's time to go back to his worst moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great time to show this, yeah. A lot of Arsenal fans have said Jack has gone full circle uh, since this moment. So, yeah, I think it's time to talk about said moment. Okay, so apparently Xhaka has had to write 19 Instagram <laughs> apologies in his five years at Arsenal. And I just think that's incredible. I totally believe that as well. The thing was, this was Emery's fault. Emery had made the crowd so angry with his horrendous decisions around our team and the horrendous style that we were playing. And and because he kept playing Xhaka and like it was clearly not working, all the hate was directed at Xhaka unfairly. But the fact that he walked off the pitch trying to like jeer up the crowd and then cops his hand to his ear for the booze is just incredible. And then obviously tells him to f*** off, which uh, which probably didn't help. So yeah, here's the apology. My god, that's an essay. And this isn't his first rodeo. It's like a well-oiled machine at this point, you know. It's, <laughs> it's an experienced process. People have said things like kill your wife. So is he supposed to kill his wife? Is that an order? Yeah, I don't think that's a threat. <laughs> yeah, it's just an order. So what do we reckon for granite? I think I'd say solid effort because it just feels like you say a well-oiled machine. There are a depressing amount of footballer apologies relating to um, them cheating on their spouses and I think I've got the best couple here starting with Anthony Martial. I feel like this wasn't really that well known until he apologised for it as well. I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for the apology. <laughs> it's, it's the way it's worded. I would like to apologise for the evil that I have been able to do. He's apologising for uh, like having the option of cheating. He's not apologising for cheating. He's like I'm sorry that I was able to cheat in the last few months. I'm sorry that I had a really good Offer. I'm sorry that she was in heat. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the exclamation marks and the emoji at the end. Yeah. Like, sounds like he's trying to put like a, you know, a light-hearted spin on things, you know. Sorry for the evil I've been able to do these last few months. Won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> it might do. It's the evil I've been... <laughs> this is definitely him, surely, not like a PR person. Like, this is surely come from his own fingers, if you will. Yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah, I, I think this one could potentially be up there in, in absolutely glorious. <laughs> I it's think funny. absolutely glorious, yeah. It's a funny Obviously, next up, we have to have a certain Mr. Giroud. <laughs> the photo of him. I apologise to my wife, family and friends, and my manager, teammates and Arsenal fans. The poor wife. Arsenal fans getting that mention at the same level as his wife. That's amazing. I think the main reason he was apologising to, like, the Arsenal fans and team and stuff was because the photo was taken at, like, 3am before, like, Arsenal were due to play Crystal Palace or something. And then Giroud goes and does this. Wow, yeah, he's not had much rest, does he, by the, by the photos? Yeah, I love I love the fact that Arsene Wenger's statement, he said, he looked a little bit tired recently. <laughs> I want to see that in absolutely glorious. There's no way it goes anywhere else. Oh yeah, this one's going up there, definitely. 
So this next one is Mauro Icardi. I think this is his wife of eight years. Uh, he had two kids with her, then he went and cheated on her. They were gonna get a divorce or something, and um, he wrote her a love letter, and that is his apology. Strap in, cause uh, this one's a good one. So he's writing, saying, you have signed away everything that we dreamt of eight years ago. The things we yes. wanted to do together and to build a future. Oh, and because she wants to get a divorce, he's saying that she's out of line. Brilliant, well played, lad. But this letter won her back. Apparently. Yeah, th apparently this worked. <laughs> Mauro has pulled a masterclass here. I don't know how he's done this. How has this poor woman been manipulated this badly? I'm not interested in material things. I always gave those things to you. I'm a millionaire, but dressed in H&M and Amazon clothes. <laughs> what? I love the idea of him sat there writing that out like, this will win her back for sure. <laughs> H&M's not on the same level as Amazon clothes. H&M is like a respectable place to buy clothes. Amazon is so much further below. He's disrespecting H&M in this love letter as well. <laughs> this is when it just turns into, okay, there's gaslighting, and then there's like pouring lighter fluid all over her and then torching her with a flamethrower. <laughs> you'll be happy with your material. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Materialistic. Hope you'll be happy with your in Amazon underpants. This is such a confusing love letter. It starts off as an apology, then it just devolves into like this incel love letter of actually this is all your fault. And then at the end he, uh, he goes back to apologising. I'd maybe test yourself for bipolar disorder <laughs> if I were you, Mauro. What a roller coaster. Yeah, I mean, I can see why I won her over. Probably just the easiest thing to do after all that is just to say, all right, fine, I'll and come back to you. I reckon Icardi, again, has to go right up there in Inglorious. I think so, yeah. He's written an apology and he's called her materialistic, an asshole, and I hope you find a footballer who's at one hundredth of me. So yeah, a, a modern day Romeo and Juliet, really. Next up, I've got Thomas Partey's red card against Liverpool. Uh, very recently, actually. Partey had just come back from uh, AFCON. Uh, he wasn't even supposed to play, but uh, he made it onto the bench against Liverpool. 2-0 down, 75 minutes in, um, Arteta decides to unleash Thomas Partey party to try and turn things around and then two yellow cards in three minutes sends him for a nice early shower after this little incident he put up this apology oh my god yes i remember this i remember it because of the branding i love the thomas party branded uh, apology yes. paper yeah so again it's a bit of an essay for being sent off in an already lost game i think it gets some serious points for the graphics he's not just written this in his notes and stuck it on twitter and my captain does it in an official statement i like the fact he's just kind of signed it at the end like uh, yeah that's something like i would have said i reckon and gentle chuckle. I think it's faded from memory a bit, but this is just truly awful. <laughs> Juventus women. Oh my god. Where do we start? This has gone past, first of all, the player that's done it, the photographer, the social media manager of Juventus that's posted it. Probably other people at the club have seen it happen, and then probably other people at the club have approved it go up as well. So there's probably about five people that this has gone through and they've all thought, yeah, this is, this is fine. There is at least five layers of racism here. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's not like the Wayne Hennessy Nazi salute where he can try and defend himself, like trying to say it was misinterpreted. There is absolutely no misinterpreting this. Yeah, it's the emoji caption for me as well. <laughs> it really drives it home. And the apology for this, it's not good. We sincerely apologise that our tweet, which was not meant to cause controversy or have any racial undertones, may have offended anyone. They've apologised that people feel offended for what they've done, not the fact that they've put out a very offensive tweet. Yeah, yeah we're sorry that you've got offended by this. I think that has to be in the bottom. That's a terrible apology. Let's lighten things up again, shall we? Do you remember the young Yaya birthday cake incident. When I filmed with Yaya Torre, they said to me beforehand, don't mention anything about birthday cakes. And I was like, I wasn't going to. <laughs> like, <laughs> but now I am. Yeah, yeah, but now you've put it in my head. <laughs> so yeah, Man City had won the league in 2014 and Yaya's birthday was two days after that. I think long story short, uh, Man City didn't get Yaya Torre a birthday cake to celebrate the occasion. His agent criticised City for not properly celebrating the Ivorian's 31st birthday. And then Torre um, actually tweeted, everything Dimitri said is true. He speaks for me. I will explain after the World Cup. Which obviously just threw fuel onto the fire. There isn't really much of an apology for from like Yaya for this, and there's no apology for the club, but there is a bit of an apology here. I talked with Khaldun and I was saying, it's not me, don't worry. I just love the idea that Yaya's had to go to the chairman of Manchester City to apologize for this incident about him uh, kicking off about a birthday cake. <laughs> I'd say this one's probably a gentle chuckle. Yeah, I think gentle chuckle. It's just a funny situation really, isn't it? Okay, so you'll love this one, because a couple of these, they're not apologies, they're more excuses and um, explanations for things, but they were like, 
like just incredible and I, I kind of wanted to talk about them. So for this incident, ex Rotherham keeper Chris Mooney, so he, he must have let in a very soft shot. His excuse for this shot going in was the, the fact that the sun was reflecting off his bald centre back's head into his eyes. <laughs> I just read this and I just thought that was just hilarious. I've enjoyed that, yeah. You know, a nice short and sweet one. Where are we putting Chris Mooney and his uh, bald centre back excuse? I'll put that one in and gets a chuckle from me. So I found this one while I was like looking at some of the uh, various apologies for cheating on spouses. Just take a look at this. Carlos was stopped by police when he was running naked through the streets of Huamanga. When questioned, he said that he could not stop as he was chased by ghosts. He later confessed that he had made up the story so that his wife believed it because in reality he was engaging with dirty ladies and they had mugged him. The wheel of excuses is really in there. I really want to put this in solid effort just because it's just such a bad excuse but it's also so incredible at the same time. Is there anything else you'd like to add before I um, start trying to wrap things up? I do want to just give a couple of honourable mentions. So there was Ivan Tony in that video saying f Brentford. Did he apologise for that? No, but like people putting up fake apologies for him, like what he was going to put up. It says, first of all, I want to apologise to the Brentford fans for the video that's been leaked. It's been taken out of context. A woman said she would hold this wood <laughs> if I said Brentford, so man was thirsty in it. I was under the influence of alcohol, but that's no excuse. My bad. I love you all, X. Yeah, that definitely deserves an honourable mention. Let's throw Tony in there. Oh, again, it's almost branded paper. It's not quite Thomas Parsley. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Paper. This is um, this is Squawker posting it. Okay, so it's not even close to the Thomas Parsley branded paper. That's too genuine for me. That's poor. I'm sure we'll get a magnitude of apologies that people will comment in the comment section that we've missed out, but I feel like we've got the majority of the famous ones here. Do you have a particular favourite? Oh, uh, it's got to be Hennessy. Wayne Hennessy. You think 100%. the Hennessy? That's a close second for me behind the Icardi one. It's just such a saga, isn't it? And the fact it worked. Yeah, the fact it worked, crucially. You know what? I reckon that's a pretty solid list there. I reckon everything's in the right spot. And if it's not, we'll issue an apology after the video. And it'll be on Dixon Family branded paper. And once again, massive thank you to Christoph for uh, for joining me for this and providing his valuable insight. If this list has offended anyone, to my fans, uh, to my family and to my teammates, I'd like to apologise.